For this week, I'm going to show drywalling. This is a continuation of my series uh, in remodeling this bathroom. So this is all done already, but I'm going to go back. So there used to be a really large mirror here, one of those you know, kind of ugly 1990s. Pulled it down and destroyed the drywall, so I had to put a whole new piece of drywall. There was a different vanity in here as well, uh, but I was able to cover that up with one piece. So show. Um, I'm not going to put up the drywall, but just showing how to uh, putty the, the, the corners and everything, and, and the, uh, the the holes, sand it, finish it, get it ready for priming. And so I'll leave in the description some of the uh, tools that I used, and then some you know, additional information. You can hear, see here it was pretty simple, just one piece of drywall, and I pre-cut wh what I wanted to hole to get rid of the old drywall to four feet so that I knew I could put this right in there. I just had to trim it to length to get off because it comes in eight-foot sections, so that's why I didn't show it. Uh, and then you can see the, the screw pattern there, just pretty simple. Um, so what you want to try to do here is, not try, but you actually want to do, is to put the, uh, you want to put a thin layer of drywall on either side of the joint. So you're, essentially what you're trying to do is make uh, that tape that you're going to put on there, it holds the joint together because if you just put regular compound on there, it would just crack as the house settled or, you know, things expanded. So you just put a thin layer down, just enough, and then you want to use this the, the paper joint. Uh, they make mesh, but from what I've read, the, the paper is the best for uh, this application. And you just use the uh, your putty knife and just tear it off there. I did a little bit angle just because I have to go around that light socket, uh, but it's not a big deal. You're just trying to get the most of the joint to be uh, you know covered. This will be covered by the plate. You can see I did a little bit long. You can always trim it. It's just paper. So I'm going to put it in there, and then I'm going to use the knife to kind of settle it into the, the compound. And you don't want any bubbles. You can see I have a little bit of a bubble there because I pressed it from one side. You're just trying to work it in down into there. And then, you know, you're not pressing and getting rid of every piece of joint compound underneath it, but just enough where it lays pretty flat. You don't want a thick layer or anything like that. This, this, just a little bit on, underneath is good. And then what you do is put the joint compound on top of it. And so this is your covering that's going to cover up the paper so that when you go to, down the sand, uh, you're not sanding directly into the paper. And again, this is kind of a, a thin layer just to start off with. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm using this uh, you know, smaller knife here just to kind of keep it thin because it, you know, it, it cracks the same way as if you, if you do it too thick. So I'm just kind of going from the center. It'll be a little bit thicker than on the edges where it feathers out completely. And then now I'm going to work on the corner. The corner acts just the same way as the straight one. Uh, so you just want to cut it to length. Uh, you know, you can put the, the joint compound down first. I just kind of like measuring it just to make sure it's good before I put it down. And then you just, the same way, you just, on each side where the, the table, tape is going to uh, rest, you're going to you want some joint compound down there. Again, thin layer. Uh, and then this, the, the tape has a fold down the center of it just for this purpose. So you get it folded and then just settle it into there. And then work it in place. Same thing. You want to get rid of any bubbles, any imperfections, and you want to try to make that line go as straight as possible down. So you can kind of you know work it after you get it in there. Because if if it's wavy, you'll end up seeing that when it when you're finished. And in the same way, you just want to go back and cover it up. Uh, again, a thin layer, a little bit thicker towards the corner, and it's going to feather out. And you can use the edge of the trowel to you know feather that. You don't have to make just try to make it perfect. And the corner is a little more difficult because you see on the say on the left corner, I you know, already put some in there. And then as you go from the other side of the corner, your knife may dig in if you go too close or you know dig it into the existing part. So you just kind of do as best as you can. So I'm feathering it like that. And then once you let it dry, you know, it might be an hour, it might be a couple days, or a day, uh, depending what you, you know, how, what kind of compound you use. Then you're going to sand it. I like these drywall sanders, especially hook up to your vac. Uh, this is a the Festool uh, dust collector, so it has a HEPA filter, but you really want a good uh, filter on there. They make specific drywall filters uh, for this, uh, just because otherwise it'll be sucking it in and sanding it out and then blowing it out. And what you want to do here is, so I didn't show you, but it's pretty easy. The same way as I did the tape, you want to go over all your drywall holes, any imperfections, you know, anything you're trying to fix. And you don't want to stand really hard. You don't want to remove the, the paper. And also you don't want to groove too much into the, uh, the drywall compound. At this first stage, at the first step, it's not as bad. 
because uh, it's going to cover up. You just want to, you're going to repeat the step three times. And here's an example showing you what it looks like or meant it, this uh, the drywall compound sinks in a little bit or it shrinks. And so you can see, and also I have some grooves here where I push too hard with the, the sandpaper uh, or, you know, imperfection there. But this is all, it's the first one. Whereas this one's a little bit better. You can see there's, there's not much left on there. And so after you sand it all down, like I said, you're going to move to a slightly bigger knife. Uh, this is a six inch knife. And you'll notice I'm trying to fade it past the original because what you want to do essentially each time is just fade it a little bit further, a little bit further so that you end up with a nice transition from the thickness to you know, the wall, the existing wall. The corners aren't as bad to see, but when you have a flat line, it's a little bit easier to see if it's raised up and there's not a good you know, transition between the two. So here's why I mentioned with you when you're trying to do the corner, if you do one and then when you go to the other side, your, your knife sometimes drags into the existing wet area. So I'm not going to show every, uh, you know, this, it's the same thing. It's just over and over. You just do this three times, like I said, uh, for everything. And you can see I'm kind of dragging it down here. And what I'm doing in the corner is stay, it's staying thicker than on the side where I'm using the edge to drag it and the, uh, fade it out or blend it out. You don't have to do this, but it just ends up being more sanding and more mess. So if you, it's, it's really just an art of kind of, you know, getting it s softly blended with it, but at the same time not doing too much and reducing the amount of you know, sanding you need. So you need to do all the holes because you saw it shrunk uh, a little bit. So you want to get this flat again. I like to kind of fade it out, not make it, again, I'm, I'm working a little bit too hard on this. Uh, but you can see after it dries, uh, this is the second time. So I've made it you know, kind of faded out everywhere that needs to be, all the corners, all the straight uh, lines. Um, it's all kind of faded or, you know, blended out. This is rough right before I'm going to do the, the last sanding. And you can see here it's, it's a little bit better, there, but there's places where it cracked. So it was actually too thick uh, here and so or made it drive too quickly or something so that's something I had to fix and you can see it's dry in the corner as well but the rest of it's a little bit smooth uh, so at this point I like to usually switch to a sanding pad uh, just because it's a little bit softer than the, the, the grits uh, you know the pros can maybe do it a little bit better but I like doing this uh, and then I just use the vacuum just to suck up the drywall dust as it's falling and I like to go in you know, circular patterns you can see I'm not pushing with my rest or anything it's all really just fingertip strength because you don't want to be digging in especially in the corners it's really easy to dig in on one side uh, and then just you know, kind of ruin it and then you got to make an another pass so it's really again just trying to clean it all up I also like to clean it up a little bit. You saw me kind of touch it so that when you go to paint, you don't have this, the dust everywhere. But this stuff just gets everywhere and it floats in the air. Uh, it settles on everything. So it's just, it's a lot to clean. So you can hear here, this is after the final uh, sanding. You can see how wide it got at the top. It's probably like, I think it's about 12, 16 inches at the top. So it have a good fade out. I like to fade out the, the flat areas more than the corners they really need to. Uh, but you can see here, it's, it's, it's a lot smoother now so they have a nice transition because you see everything once you paint even if it looks like it's covered over um, one thing i recommend is if you're putting like i'm putting up mirrors here uh, before you start painting or anything i found this is a good time to put in wall anchors so like i said i'm putting mirrors here so just drilling the holes putting the anchors in getting all that done before you know so in case you need to touch anything up i found it's a, a lot nicer or a lot easier than doing it after it's finished or after it's painting so this is really what i'm trying to do uh, I'll get some later videos here where I show where I'm actually putting down the um, primer on top of it uh, using the paintbrush just like you would normal, roller over it, get it all ready for priming. Uh, but for that, for this video, this is done. It's ready to go.